Well, hey everyone, and uh, welcome uh, to our message today here at Embrace Church. And uh, for those who are watching us for the first time, my name is Brandon. I'm one of the pastors, and uh, so glad that you could be watching online with us today. Uh, just a few announcements before I get started. I uh, just want to mention our website, embracecanton.church. Uh, if you want more information about our church or how you can be a part of it, uh, please contact us. We'd love to help you in any way that we can. Uh, we have a campus in Canton, Georgia, but we also love to start home churches. And again, if you feel called to that or you're interested to know more information, uh, please let us know. Also, we want to say thank you to all those who are giving to Embrace Church. Uh, it's your giving, our giving together that allows us to do the ministry that we're able to do. And so if you'd like to give, again, you can set up giving through our website or you can text to give to the number that you now see on your screens. But again, thank you for your faithfulness. Now, if you've been with us the past few weeks, uh, we've been doing this uh, series called Second Chances, Mulligans, and Do-Overs. And uh, to get us started today, I just want to share an email uh, that was written to me by an older gentleman in my church a few years ago, uh, sharing a humorous story. He said, I was downtown for an event this past week, and as I came out of the event, there was a police officer writing parking tickets. And so I went up to him and I said, come on, buddy, how about giving a guy a break? Well, he ignored me and he continued writing the ticket. So I called him a few names under my breath, thinking he couldn't hear me. Well, I was wrong. He could hear me. He glared at me and he started writing another ticket. So I mouthed off again. And so the officer didn't skip a beat. He finished the second ticket and placed it on the windshield and began writing another. This happened two more times. But in all honesty, I didn't care because my car was actually parked around the corner. And then he wrote this. He said, it's important when you get older to make sure that you have a little fun. All right, now, again, if you've been with us the past few weeks, we've been talking about how the resurrection of Jesus gives us a second chance at everything. And that's really good news because most of us, uh, like that older gentleman, needs some second chances. Uh, but the good news of Easter is that it ushered in a new beginning. Uh, it gives us the opportunity to have a fresh start, uh, a new chance at life. And uh, if you were with us way back on Easter Sunday, we talked about how through Christ, that no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, uh, His grace is sufficient for your sin. That your mistakes, your sins, whatever you have done, you can be forgiven. You can be given a second chance. You, be, you can be given a do-over. Now, it's really important that we realize that as we think about our past, we not only have to deal with our own sins, uh, but part of the other part of our past that we have to deal with is the things that have been done to us. See, sometimes we have uh, bitterness, <clears throat> we have pain, we have burdens, not because of the things we've done, but because of the things that other people have done. <clears throat> <clears throat> and this is really, really important because if you're not careful, uh, those past burdens, that past pain, has a way of catching up with you in the present. Now, there are a lot of things in our life that can make us angry, that can make us frustrated. I remember reading an article recently, and it mentioned several things that I think we can all relate to. Uh, one thing it mentioned was um, waiting in line. Uh, I don't know if you're like me, but when I'm at the grocery store and I see the lines, I'm mentally calculating which line is the shortest, and I'm not only looking at the number of people in those lines, but I'm also looking at the number of food items that they have in their buggy because I want to wait as short as possible. And it also mentioned on waiting on people who show up late. Uh, and if you're watching right now and you're one of those people who's always on time, you're like, yeah, that's right. That's so annoying. If you're one of those flaky people who's always a little bit late, you're wondering what's the big deal. Uh, it also mentioned um, being at a slow restaurant. Uh, this makes the people who not only get hungry, but get hangry when they have to wait on their food. I had also mentioned being stuck in traffic or being uh, behind a slow or bad driver. Like that really makes a lot of people angry. That's why road rage is such a problem. See, we all struggle uh, with frustrations and anger. And a lot of that, again, has to do with, the, with our past. We'll get that in a moment. Uh, but I can remember when I was growing up, I've told you all before, I have two older brothers. And uh, these older brothers were not just older than me, but they were also a lot bigger than me. And so when we played sports, I never won. They always won. And this was back in the day before you had participation trophies and uh, you would just let other people win because that's the nice thing to do. Uh, so when I say that I never won, I mean that. I'm not exaggerating. I literally never won against my brothers. Uh, but every now and then I would have good moments. 
And I remember this one time I was playing baseball with my brothers and some of their friends and my brother was pitching and he threw the ball and I just hit it perfectly. Now I did not typically hit a lot of home runs, but I launched this ball over the fence. And again, this was a rare moment where I got the best of my brother. So I remember like I posed, you know, I watched that ball go over the fence without moving. And then when it finally hit the ground, I flipped my bat and I started walking to first base. Like I literally took an hour and 22 minutes to round the bases. Like this was my moment and I was gonna seize it. Now, while I'm taking forever rounding the bases, my brother's just getting angrier and angrier. And in the meantime, someone has retrieved the ball and brought it back to my brother, who then proceeds to throw it at me and hit me in the shoulder, which it did hurt but it was so worth it because this was such a rare moment where I got the best of my brother. Now I mentioned those other things that make us angry, but number one in that article's list that makes us angry is actually relationships, which is not surprising. It's actually relationships with those who are closest to us that can oftentimes aggravate us the most. And I think oftentimes those little things like waiting in the line or getting stuck in traffic, they really make us angry, partly because we have all this bitterness and anger that we've pushed down over the years. You see, no matter who you are, if you are watching this today and you're breathing, uh, you've experienced hurt in your life. Uh, you've experienced pain, frustration. Uh, there are things that people have done that have hurt you. And so the question is, is what do we do with that hurt? And oftentimes when people hurt us, we then go and hurt others. It leads to these outward actions where we gossip about people or we say mean words to people or they mistreat us so we mistreat them back. And so we do all of these things or we write a, uh, an angry social media post online because that makes everything better, of course. And then there's some of us who take all these wounds and we internalize them. Uh, maybe we don't do outward actions, but inward, uh, we're angry, we're frustrated. Inwardly, we are holding grudges against people. Some of you watching are professional grudge holders. And so whenever you see that person, you have a negative attitude towards them. You think judgmental and critical thoughts about them. And anytime something goes well in their life, you feel jealousy. And anytime something bad happens in their life, uh, you, you actually rejoice in it. You have this negative spirit on the inside. Now, whether it's inward or outward, uh, we all have this pain and this bitterness that is dictating the way we live, the way we see people, the way we treat people, the way we talk, the way we think. And a couple of questions I would want to ask you as we think about this pain from the past is a couple of questions that I heard another pastor mention. I thought they were great. And the first question he asked is, how long is long enough? How long are you going to carry the anger that happened to you in the past? Like, how long is too long? Is, is, it, is it okay to carry it for a few days, a few weeks, a few years? How long are you going to carry those emotions from the past into your present? The second question I'd ask is, how long are you going to allow the people who mistreated you to influence you? How long are you going to allow the people who mistreated you to influence you? Again, we've all had things happen to our life where people did something that harmed us, that hurt us. The question is, is what are we going to do with that stuff? And I don't know about you, but it makes no sense to allow the people who have hurt us to dictate the way that we live. And yet that is so many people that allow their bitterness um, and uh, judgment and pain to dictate the way that they live in the future. They're allowing other people and the mistakes of other people to dictate the way that they live in the present. Now again, the good news is, is that it doesn't have to be that way. And here's where scripture gives us some amazing words. God's word uh, gives us a new way, again, a, a different chance, a second chance, a new opportunity uh, to deal with these things differently. See, in a world full of vengeance and hate, God calls us to love. In a world full of uh, getting even, uh, God calls us to turn the other cheek. Uh, in a world where we love to hold grudges, God calls us to a life of forgiveness. And that's the key here, is that all that pain is there. What are we going to do with it? And God gives us a different opportunity. He calls us to forgive other people. And this is so important because forgiveness is the only ability to deal with that pain from the past. See, you have to release that pain so that that pain can release 
you. I want you to notice what the Apostle Paul says here in Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, he gives us some great uh, wisdom here. Verse 26, he says, Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with malice. Be kind to one another, forgiving one another, as God and Christ forgave you. So therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. So notice the instructions that Paul gives us here. He says, first, be angry. Now, this is a great word for many of you because you can already say, hey, I'm applying the Bible. I'm angry all the time. So he says, be angry. Now, this this is really, really important and wise because he's saying, hey, it's okay to feel anger. In fact, if someone's wronged you, if someone has hurt you, um, then you should feel angry. Uh, those emotions are normal and those emotions are valid. So I want to be very clear. Forgiveness, living a life of forgiveness, doesn't mean um, pretending like everything's okay. It doesn't mean staying in a toxic relationship. It doesn't mean being a doormat for other people. What it means is that you're not going to allow toxic people uh, to transform you into a toxic person. What it means is that you're not going to allow the actions of others to dictate your actions and how you treat people. And so Paul's clear, he says, be angry, but he says, but do not sin. Again, don't allow anger to control the way you live. Don't allow uh, anger to lead you into sinful actions. That emotion is okay, but oftentimes what we do with that emotion is not okay. And so I think the great good news here, just in this first phrase, is do not. Meaning what it means is you have a choice. Uh, we can't always control what happens to us and, and what other people do. But we do get to choose our response. So be angry, but do not sin, and do not let the sun go down on your anger. Again, how long is long enough? How long are you going to carry your anger, your bitterness, um, your frustration? A few weeks, a few years? Uh, Paul says, don't let uh, the sun go down, go down on your anger. Uh, be in the habit of forgiving people. Be in the habit of praying and asking God to give you the strength to forgive. Make that a habit in your life. And then he says, give no opportunity to the devil. Again, he's saying when you have anger and you allow that anger to control you, what you're doing is you're giving an opportunity for your spiritual enemy to lead you into other sins. And this is why this is so important, because if we're not careful, our pain from the past can wreak havoc in our present day life. It, anger and uh, unresolved anger can control us to the point that it leads us uh, into sin, into bad habits, into addictions, um, into uh, us actually abusing other people because we've been abused. So he says, do not allow anger to give a foothold to your spiritual enemy. This will cause you so many other issues. So he says, instead, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander be put away from you. Release the past so that the past can release you. He says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God and Christ forgave you. Now this is critical. He says, I want you to love each other. I want you to forgive each other because Christ has forgiven you. And here's where we see the root of forgiveness, uh, the motivation. It's all rooted in the gospel. Uh, we can't forgive others in our own strength. But Paul is saying that through Christ, and knowing the grace that he has extended to you and the forgiveness that he's giving to you, I want you then to forgive other people and therefore be imitators of God. Walk in love as Christ has loved us. And this, this is where it gets really good. Because as we release our past, we are now able to receive God's promises. You see, as we let go of that bitterness, that anger, uh, that frustration, uh, we are now able to receive God's future for our lives. Uh, we are now able to walk in love. We are now empowered and freed to be generous and compassionate and kind. And this is the life that God wants us wants to give us. But see, it's so critical because I know there's some people watching right now where I truly believe that God wants to pour out blessings in your life, uh, that God wants to transform your life, that God wants to redeem your relationships, that he wants to give you a healthier path, a second chance but you can't receive those promises because you are holding on too tightly to all of that baggage. You can't receive what God wants to give you because your hands are not able to receive what he wants to give you. It's too caught up holding all of those things from the past. 
But see, as you release your past, your past releases you, and now you can receive the promises, the future, the destiny, the calling that God wants to place in your life. See, like many of you watching, I've experienced a, a certain amount of pain in my life. Uh, there have been moments where I've had to get on my knees and I've had to forgive people. And I've had to give those burdens and that pain over to God and ask Him to take it away from me. And here's what is, what's amazing, is that He did. Man, that He's faithful, that He was able to relieve me of these burdens and this pain that I've been carrying way, way too long. Again, that, that's the question. How long is long enough? And for some of you, you've been carrying pain for way too long. And I want to encourage you, man, we worship a God of second chances. And God not only can forgive our mistakes, but He can release us from the mistakes of other people. History does not have to repeat itself. You do not have to carry these things forever. And the actions of others no longer need to influence the way you live. Because you have a Heavenly Father. And this God loves you. And He's with you. And He has an amazing, an amazing future for your life. Better than you can ever imagine. Let me pray for us. Uh, Father, I just thank you for the promises in your scripture, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for each of us, the people watching right now who have experienced a lot of pain, Lord, and it was not their fault. Uh, and they have a lot of hurts and wounds. And Lord, I don't expect that one sermon is going to make all of that go away. But Lord, I just pray that today your healing would start to take place. That today uh, they would uh, start to release their past to you. And that, Lord, that they would know your grace is sufficient, not just for their sin, but also for their pain. And Lord, I just pray that in this moment, they would realize that you love them and that you're with them. And that, Lord, you have a plan for their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as always, you're going to see uh, there online, we have some go deeper questions. Again, our whole goal with uh, even this online content is not just for you to watch a sermon, but for you then to take this message and discuss it with other people. Because it's as we talk about our faith and share about our faith that we then grow in our faith. And again, if you're at a home church right now, uh, please know that we are praying for you. And again, this is your opportunity in your home church to uh, talk about how God has spoken to you through today's message. Again, we hope you have a great week and uh, we will see you uh, next Sunday. God bless.